What about now? Is that better? Sorry about that, guys. Um, apologies. But we are live now. Uh, I was saying good afternoon from Valencia, but I can see some people are in Asia in the chat pretty late there. I imagine close to midnight time, Southeast Asia, if you're saying um, some people from Thailand. Hope you guys are well, you know, wherever you are in the world. Um, glad to be live streaming. Got back a little bit earlier, so I just thought I'd live stream. And yeah, I've taken a pretty fat minus eight so far. Um, I'll show my bench a little bit later. What I'm looking out for today myself is to sort of track potential Muniz news because we did know, of course, that he has an ankle, ankle in injury that he's been carrying for a while. Played fine, obviously, in the previous game for Sheffield United. I can't see why he'd be benched for Nottingham Forest, but, you know, if that eventuality comes up, I've got a plan. So, And it's obviously going to entertain another hit, unfortunately, because I've got Pedro Neto in my team. Um, so that's that. It seems like as well, in terms of other news, it seems like Malo Gusto, who's actually on my bench, right? Uh, it seems like Malo Gusto, as you can see on my bench, has apparently trained today with Chelsea. But the problem is I can't authentify this source. This source is a completely new source. Um, and it's just a friend of a friend, really, from Twitter. So I don't know whether that means Malo Gusto is fit and ready to play for Game Week 31, whether he's fit or maybe he doesn't have an injury at all. Because obviously... Yes, of course, men people mentioned that he was clutching his hamstring, but Malagusto sometimes tends to get subbed off a little bit earlier at times as well. We've seen that in the past. Um, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the situation would be. So if you guys are, let's say, thinking about playing Malagusto, go for it. Um, I took the chance to take a minus four for Guardiola. Part of this is because this team is going to last me for quite a while, right? He could be a good option for Gaming 37 when we have the doubles for Man City. The short-term fixtures for City are really good as well. And there's enough injuries for me to think that his minutes are, are safe. And then another thing, too, with Guardiola, of course, is we always know that he's amazing for sort of pass metrics in terms of bonus. But another thing as well is Watkins is out for this fixture versus Man City. So the way I see it, it's going to reduce, obviously, the strength of the Aston Villa attack. Now, I'm sure someone like Leon Bailey will absolutely score another beautiful goal like he did last time around in the reverse fixture. Um, but I'll take my chances. And it, it feels like a little bit more of a long-term move, but something that has short-term value as well. As opposed to, let's say, going for Virgil and blocking myself off from Bruce Diaz. So that was the idea. Um, someone also mentioned that Gusto was seen training the Chelsea TikTok weekly training video. Fair enough, Adam. Good shout there. Um, Wildcard draft for this week, for those without free at 34, we can definitely jump onto that in a moment. Van Heck or Bradley, I think it comes down to, first of all, whether you're... I mean, whether you need... Van Heck is in a good transfer this week, right? So if you're talking about, you know, building... A bench boost up, I think Van Heck makes sense if you're, let's say, planning to bench boost 37. Um, but Bradley, of course, is much, much more short term. He could be very valuable just for this week alone. Um, Hash88 says, hi, friends. Salah plus Darren plus Q are in. Foden plus Watkins plus to be on out. I still like those transfers, to be fair, but um, I I'm not 100% certain about QER's move, right? Yes, of course, it's nice to have QER, but I can't guarantee that he's going to play consistently when Tommy Yasu and Zinchenko are fit. Um, Avijo, thank you so much for your super chat. Um, is it okay to go without Salah or buy for a minus eight? Personally, I think a minus eight for Salah is fine, right? The way we see it is Salah is so clear of a captaincy option that I still think that it's worth taking a minus eight for Salah. If you want to go without Salah, though, I can also understand the sentiment there. You know, I'm taking a minus eight. Technically, I took a minus four to get Salah in my team, but some people will be taking a minus eight, and I think that's totally fine. Um, is Darwin or Muniz better for chasing? I mean, personally, I think Darwin, right? Because Technically, you've got more upside with Darwin in theory, right? If he starts versus Sheffield United, that's a perfect sort of situation. So I would say Darwin. Um, Holland to have a front three of Isak, Solanke, Darwin. Um, I mean, I guess if you've got that front three, you probably don't need Holland right now. You could probably wait a little bit, in fairness. Havertz one week punt. I like it. Yeah, makes sense. I think he's he's pretty likely to start, but I can't confirm that. Uh, Pranjal, thank you for your super chat to start one Madison or B Muniz. I would actually start Muniz, right? Because personally, I think Muniz is in a situation where, let's say, if he needs rest, he's probably going to be benched. And I can't see why they'll need to risk him. But I think he's very likely going to start, right? He was okay. He played the full fixture, scored a super goal. Madison isn't in the best of his moments. And Madison has basically three fixtures in the space of a week. If he's unfit, I just see that his minutes could actually continue to be bad for this week. And maybe he'll sort of pick up form, pick up, pick up some fitness in the short term. But I'd rather start Muniz, to be honest. So thank you guys both for the super chats. Um, hope that works out for you guys. Is Gusto playing? I can't confirm that. I really can't confirm that. It's uh, 
the thing with Chelsea too is that we usually get their injury news on the day of the press conferences. Uh, why did I remove Doughty over Pau? Any particular reason? Um, Doughty, I don't care about fixture tickers really. So um, that's that. I mean, Luton are still the worst defense in the league. Aston Villa a touch better. And it's not even about fixture tickers, but rather just a case of, you know, when I look at, for example, would I play Pau on Game Week 32? Potentially, would I play Doughty? Probably a little bit more unlikely. So it's just w looking at the fixtures remaining, do I really care about either of them? Probably not, right? I think I took Doughty out because he's set to fall and he's also with an injury doubt and he's been carrying some sort of injury that I think we, we've seen for basically half a month now or maybe a month because of the international break as well included. And with Pau Torres, he's fit, he's ready to play. I prefer keeping players who, let's say if I really need to go really deep in my auto subs this week, I'd rather have Pau. And honestly, I think Pau Torres is going to leave the team soon. So he's going to simply just become an Everton defender. Um, would I? Why would I not captain Haaland? Well, I don't know. Salah's playing Sheffield United. I think that's that. Um, would I start Gusto or Zabarni? I'd probably actually start Zabarni. I just think it's safer. You never know. Like Gusto could be rested for this fixture, so I wouldn't take that chance. Um, you don't know who to bench. Aiden says Muniz, Solanke, Son, or Palmer. I'd probably bench Muniz to be honest. What's my bench? Um, I'll flash it really quickly, but unfortunately, it's just with my MacBook here. Uh, when I'm on holiday, it doesn't seem to have the correct aspect ratio that I like. Um, but this is my bench. Um, so it's Neto, Gusto, Pau Torres, Flecken as well on the bench. Um, I can just actually mention my bench, you know, as part of the chat. And probably that would be easier so that we don't have to go back and forth as well, just to show you guys all the time. Alrighty, so um, my bench is Flecken, uh, P, Neto, Gusto, I'll just pin that for now. Why is Muniz not starting? I never said Muniz is not starting. I just said that it's possible that he couldn't start. Um, but that that's probably unlikely. I think he's very likely to start, which is why you can see that I still have Muniz in my team. Uh, Raktim says, your thoughts on Livermento and Holden? The thing about Livermento, though, is that didn't Livermento have to get subbed off, though? So I think that's a small point of concern. So I'm not even sure if Livermento is actually fit for this week. Um... Yeah, that's my concern, basically. Um, sorry, I'm just quickly checking on leaks, because someone has mentioned, obviously, the possibility of, um, you know, Muniz maybe not starting. I can't see anything in terms of Muniz. Most of these sort of journalists from Fulham have basically mentioned that he's pretty likely to play. So I wouldn't be too worried about it myself. And yeah, the only thing I would say as well in terms of, you know, shaky minutes and, and players like that, Richarlson, I think very likely that there's a world where he's still not starting. Um, yep. Is Palmer a captaincy shout? I don't think so, personally. I think, look, it's a good fixture in the sense that Man United are a pretty bad defense. Um, you know, for example, Brentford amassed something like, what, three, you know, upwards of three expected goals versus Man United. And that's not really surprising given the context of United season and their overall bad performances. However, it seems like they've always been able to sort of overperform their poor defensive numbers. Um, so there's something there. I think Palmer and Chelsea at home are very strong. But of course, it's like the question is, you know, 10 versus 11, a little bit of an overstatement in terms of what he usually can provide, right, in terms of Palmer. I would still say, though, that um, I'd probably not risk a Palmer captaincy. Like, it's just so good, a solid fixture. If you can get there, I would slam the captaincy on him. I think it's a bit of a no-brainer personally, and I would take that situation um, like so. Darwin or Solanke, I'd probably go... For me, Solanke feels safer, whereas Darwin obviously feels like higher upside. What transfers did I make? Uh, the transfers that I made, or made rather, um, let's see. So I went Doughty to Guardiol because of the sort of risk with uh, Guardiol. I mean, Doughty not being able to be fit maybe for the Arsenal fixture. 
I went Bruno to Salah and Watkins to Muniz. And of course, uh, there's no Muniz news at all. Um, it's just that, of course, earlier today in the press conference, we basically just got a confirmation that he's been carrying an injury, which of course we saw when he got subbed off in the Fulham game and he wasn't training within the international um, break. And, and so, of course, he got through the Sheffield United game fine. I don't think there's any news additionally on Muniz personally. I think he's probably good to play. He, did, he didn't really say Muniz is the doubt. He said Muniz is probably okay to play. So there's a small doubt, but I don't think it was like, there wasn't really an in, for example, like when we, let's say, listen to Unai Emery talk about uh, Watkins is not right. He basically mentioned that in, in theory, Watkins is unlikely to play within the fixture. So whereas in this situation, you kind of just heard that Muniz was okay to play, but there's a small, you know, ankle issue that he's just dealing with. But, you know, that happens a lot with football players in terms of carrying through injuries. Thoughts on buying Jackson, Rectum says, and holding to double game, double game 37. I think Jackson's fine, but then also the only thing I'd say is that you've sort of, you've, you've missed the Burnley fixture, right? So that would have been a perfect landing spot for Chelsea. Whereas I think going forward, the next few Chelsea fixtures aren't amazing. You still have the Sheffield United fixture, to be fair. Um, but I, I would still, for example, prefer someone like an Isak short term because he's pretty close in price to Jackson and has better fixtures anyways heading towards 37, so I'd prefer probably an Isak over a Jackson. But if if you if the money is tight, I can understand the appeal of Jackson. It's just that with Isak, you have penalties, you have got slightly better underlying stats as well, I believe, um, and better minutes, of course, hoping that Isak isn't, isn't fit, um, or injured rather, sorry. What do you think about the potential effects of fasting for Ramadan and Salah's performance? I mean, Salah looks pretty good versus Brighton, but are you talking about what, like the nighttime, daytime aspect of the fixture or historically Salah's performances during Ramadan. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we, I mean, we have sports science. I think it's obviously tougher for athletes to perform if they're fasted. Um, but we've seen Salah perform really well during um, Ramadan. So I'm not really concerned um, with Salah. Is Ariola going to start? Uh, I don't think so, because it seems like Moyes basically said it's a short-term injury and that he's unlikely to play within the midweek fixture. So I would say Ariola is basically confirmed out. Gusto is not confirmed out. I would start Ait Nuri over Gusto, though, Kafal. So that's what I would do. Um, so I thank you for your super chat as well. Play Robinson versus Forrest or do a minus four Aki to Ait Nuri. Um, I would just play Robinson versus Forrest. I think that's a really good fixture, to be honest. Forrest are still, you know, not exactly an amazing offensive team. Why not take the chances there? Uh, Benson was a beast when fasting. Fair, yeah. I mean, this happens. Like, there's a lot of athletes who are playing really well, like during this time of year. And, um, you know, that's it. Your wildcard thirty one draft. Yeah, let's have a look at a wildcard thirty one draft. Why not? Um, I mean, first of all, it, I mean, wildcard thirty one. One thing that I'll mention is that it really depends on whether you're free hit thirty four or not, right? Because you could be wildcard thirty one and free hit thirty four, and you can't care less about the three hit thirty four fixtures. One thing that I'll do is actually I'll probably discuss who I actually think should appear on different drops, right? So for me, cheap defenders, I think Van Heck should appear on a free at 34 draft because, of course, you care less about the short, short term and you're planning more for that bench boost. So Van Heck, I think, is quite good for that purpose. Whereas obviously Chris Richards, if you don't have a free hit, is still nice. Now, Chris Richards apparently um, is a doubt for this week's fixture versus Bournemouth, but... If you just want a guy who's 3.9 million, a budget player who's going to play two great fixtures in gaming 34, you know, Chris Richards is your guy there. Now, if you want to spend a bit more money on someone who has a bit of attacking potential, of, of course, you've got, um, you know, Mr. Munoz as well from Crystal Palace. So he's a good option. Now, I, Nuri, I still love a lot, particularly more so for the sort of, um, you know, non-free hit centric drafts. If you if you are going for let's say I think I would still go Raya Petrovic no matter what really you know if you are let's say someone who's planning towards the end of the season free hit or not I would still go Raya Petrovic apparently there was news that Dubravka is going to be with the sort of keeper for the rest of the season but actually it seems like that was fake news and so instead what seems like what we're going to expect is that Pope is probably going to come back around gaming thirty seven which is really bad for Dubravka right so. Even though Dubrovka is cheap, I think it's very likely that Pope could come back. Apparently, you know, we could see him at the end of the month, which means, look, in theory, he, he could very well play in 37. Um, so I'd be concerned about going Dubrovka, which is why I still like Petrovic and Raya for that purpose. Um, Gusto, I'd still be quite confident about as a pick, to be fair, uh, no, matter, no matter the draft that you're on. Bradley, I think it really is just a question of whether you need someone with a short-term value. Like, if you needed someone to play 
this week's fixture, there, there's that. I would go Gabriel over Saliba just due to price. Um, so that's my take on that. QBR, in my opinion, I think is a little bit too risky. Yes, of course, he's at an amazing price, but Tommy Asu's back, Zinchenko's back, uh, Urien Timber is pretty close to coming back, so I'd be pretty concerned about him. So let's say if I was drafting, I would definitely keep Guardiola, I'd keep Gusto, I'd probably drop Gar Gabriel. Uh, generally, I'd go Raya, I'd go Petrovic, as I mentioned. Um, you know, no interest in Neto whatsoever. He's basically, I mean, I'd, I'd say go Van Heck for now, just, you know, assuming that this is a 3 or 34 draft. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe I go, hmm. So we want to have three players for this week too. Van Heck doesn't have a great fixture, I, but I don't really want to lose out in the short term. I mean, we could go Bradley just to paper over the crack of this week and we'd still have a really competent defense. Maybe we could do that. I don't really want to go for a Tottenham defender here. Maybe actually we go Vicario, potentially. Hmm. I don't love it, though, because it's a little bit expensive, and, and Udogi's at the same price. Maybe it still has to be someone like Udogi, I would say, potentially. It's not exactly the best defense this week, though, to be fair. But you'd still have a strong defense. I'm just thinking, the issue with the Newcastle defense is it looks so bad. There's so many injuries. Like, I guess Dan Burns the best option. You could play Dan Burns as well. I'm a little bit concerned about Spurs as a team, too. Just because it doesn't actually seem like, you know, Madison's in, in his best moment. And Richarlison isn't 100% nailed. So I think him as a one-week punt was good for last week. But then it didn't even seem like he was fit. So I'm hoping no one actually went Richarlison on wild card. Um... Draft-wise, I think if you're going free at 34, I would just drop Solanke. I'd probably actually test Darwin out if you can. It's either between Darwin or Luis Diaz. I would still go Sarabia, and I'll tell you why. It's just because he's just that cheap. Or you can go Garnacho, to be fair. Hopefully his minutes will be okay like by the time Gimme 37 comes around. Um, and then the draft looks pretty good, right? You've got Sun, Palmer, Salah, Saka. To be fair, also, another thing that I noticed is that I've got ridiculous team value, guys. So if you guys have much less team value, I know you probably can't copy this draft. But this is a draft that, generally speaking, I quite like. And maybe later down the line, what you can do, obviously, is go for your Spurs players later, right? Because the idea, of course, is you miss the Luton fixture. So why even go for any Spurs fixtures until, or Spurs players, rather, until Game Week 37? I think that's a very logical approach um, that I would probably take. Sun, however, is a little bit different because it's like Sun is such a good option. His minutes are so good. Um, I wouldn't worry about taking Sun out of my team if you can afford the structure. Now, if you can't afford the structure, um, I'd probably go out of Sun, in all honesty, or maybe go out of Darwin. Um, you could always just put Jao Pedro at the back of your wildcard, right? And maybe if you really want to downgrade for now, you could always go Luis Diaz short term and then pick back Sun. Like if, if we're trying to save as much money as possible, you know, th this is not a bad team to go over the next few weeks, right? You've got Luis Diaz for Sheffield United. Um, technically you don't have triple Liverpool, but I'd probably tempt myself with Bradley because when on a wild card, you always feel like you've got a, a sort of punt to go with. I don't really mind Luis Diaz, if I'm honest. Um, Jao Pedro, he's back. I would probably bench him this week. So maybe the question is actually whether we keep Garnacho. Um, you could obviously have Sun in this situation or, um, you know, if you're really trying to save up money in the short term and you actually need someone who's got good fixtures, like think about Sarabia, right? Because even if we ignore Game Week 34, Sarabia still has Burnley away, West Ham at home, Nottingham Force away, and then Luton at home. And then after that, you can reconsider going to Garnacho, right? If Garnacho is nailed by then, just go to Garnacho then. Because if you're free at 34, you're already going to miss United's best fixture, which is going to be Sheffield United at home. The only fixture that you'll miss, I suppose, is Burnley at home, or you could already have moved into you know Garnacho from, from Sarabia then. It's not a bad idea. I think that this would allow you to sort of bench Jao Pedro, you'd save a lot more money. Uh, maybe you can even upgrade some defenders here too. So if you really want to go, for example, you know, maximize the short term, for example, and you wanted to go Virgil, I can appreciate that. And obviously, I would say just generally speaking, if you don't have a free hit, it makes more sense to invest more so into your Liverpool players. If you do have a free hit in the back pocket, I think it makes more sense to invest in two City players. So potentially, I know some people are not going to like it, but you know you could still you could still technically just keep Foden within your wild card, um, and then you know go for other options as well. Maybe this you could still afford um, Virgil here, so that's something to think about. And I'm just assuming that some people have less you know money in the bank compared to me. I know I have slightly ridiculous team value, um, so there's that. So also another thing too is for anyone who's actually watching the video, 
um, or the stream rather, you know, if we get news that Muniz is going to get benched, we're, we're, we're doing this minus four, 100%. Um, but yeah, that's it in terms of wildcard thoughts. I hope that gives people ideas in terms of the wildcard. Let's just um, quickly check if I missed any super chat questions. Um, apologies as well, and I'll actually go through. Nope, it doesn't seem like we actually missed any super chats. That's fine. Um, I'll just quickly go through some member questions as well. Uh, Chisel Plant saying, Isaac, baby, yep. Did, a ways, did amazing last week. Why did I go Guardiola over Bradley, who is Sheffield at home? I mean, the thing is, Bradley's going to be a future transfer. Guardiola's probably going to be someone that I can keep to the end of the season. So um, this was more of a sort of minus four because I needed a defender this week anyways. Watkins is out, so I like that value. And, you know, um, obviously Bradley has a better fixture. I'm not denying that. But the whole point of FPL is that you're making transfers for the medium and long term. Um, and Guardiola will have a double game week. What do you mean? He, he double game weeks in game week 37. He plays for Man City, as far as I'm aware. Or are you saying that he's going to get benched? Um, Palmer or Gordon? I would go Palmer. Gordon, I think, because he's suspended, you know, you, you would go for him later down the line. What about Ait Nuri? I like him a lot, too. Um, you'd probably just look at that sort of crystal, that crystal palace spot, potentially, defender-wise, and just replace him with that. Start Lango or do minus four, Morris to Muniz? Um, I'd probably just start Langa. Why Salah over Saka for captain? I mean, it's Sheffield United at home. I'm not 100% sure about Saka's minutes this week, so I wouldn't take my chances with that. Any news on Trippier? Nah, not serious news. Basically, the same stuff, which is basically that Trippier has trained this week, but, you know, we have no idea whether he's going to start or not. But the thing is, they are really thin on defense. So, I wonder if he'll get risked. Maybe he will. Um, FPL guy says Madison to Barnes. Yeah, I think that makes sense as a transfer. But keep in mind, though, hmm, I mean, it depends on whether Almond's out for a long term. I think it's a bit of a short term move, but if you're, I don't know, if you have a wild card in the back pocket or you're just chasing a, a bit of upside as a differential path, I, I kind of like it, but I still think it's a bit risky. Uh, who's on the bench? Um, just see my pinned comment on the live chat. Um, Elango or Do Douglas Louise? I'd play Elango within a heartbeat. Start Burn or Supion? I'd start Burn personally. Um, start Palmer or Garnacho, Palmer. Start Alango or Douglas Luiz, Alango once again. Palmer or Muniz, I would start Palmer. If Gusto is leaked to be fit, I mean, we're not going to get a leak over the next hour and 10 minutes, I think, for a potential Gusto leak. So, yeah. Do I think Darwin starts? I I think Darwin, hmm, I'd probably say 50%. I, I'm really not sure. I think it's between potentially um, Luis Diaz and, and Darwin really to get benched because the, this would probably be the only fixture that makes sense for Liverpool to actually rotate players um, in terms of Sheffield United. And Chisel Pine, thank you so much for gifting a sub. Um, Carl Turnborn has gotten it, so congratulations to you, or getting a membership, rather. So thank you once again for supporting the channel. Diaz is nailed. I agree with that. But the thing is, too, I mean, Diaz also has played a lot of minutes of football, right? He's also played quite a fair bit within the international break. I believe he played around 167 minutes of football. So that's going to have a huge impact. Uh, Wood or Palmer, I would go Palmer. Foden or San for Salah, I would just, uh, I would, I would go out of, I'd rather go out of Foden, personally. Um, Fabian Schar is a good option. No, I think he's a little bit too expensive. Um, Chill Planet is absolutely a generous guy. Awesome guy. Um, been watching us since, um, I can't remember, but one of the game weeks when Focal had um, given us a raid very, very kindly. Um, should the planet drop by, and he's stayed with us since. Uh, Bradley, good for future. I'm, I wouldn't say for future, but I mean the, the immediate future in terms of the short term. Yeah, definitely. Uh, would I minus eight to get Havertz in? I probably wouldn't, if I'm honest. Um, hey, Fran, would you start Foden or Muniz? I would still start Foden. Uh, minus four for Raya, otherwise no keeper. Yeah, I think that's a really good transfer, actually, if you have no keeper. Um, Wood or Muniz, I would still go Muniz. Uh, Mateta or Douglas Luiz, I would go Mateta easily. Um, Douglas Luiz has a terrible fixture. Socket to Sun, I. What do you mean by Socket to Sun? You're going out of Socket to Sun. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Who is likely most? Who sorry? Who is most likely to get double game week thirty seven? Um, what do you mean? It, it's already been confirmed the fixtures for game week thirty seven. Are you going to be annoyed when Luton score? Uh, probably not, to be honest. Um, I think a lot of people own one Arsenal defender at least. 
And an Arsenal defender this week is still better than most defenders. I'd probably get annoyed if Sheffield United don't score, just because of the way my team's set up. <laughs> um, start Gusto or Regulon. I'd probably still start Regulon. Which combo is better? Uh, Foden plus Darwin or Sam plus Muniz? I'd probably go Foden plus Darwin. I can't... Mm, actually, your, your wild card in gaming 35. I'd probably say Sam plus Muniz. Uh, let's see. Chris Wood has seven in his last eight. I mean, I, I'm well aware of how good Chris Wood is. I wildcarded him. Or sorry, I free-hitted him in just recently. Uh, Jim Kehoe says, take a minus for Holland. Free-hitting in 34, no wildcard. Which team or players to focus on? Your bench boosting 37. Yeah, appreciate that, Jim. So, I mean, first of all, let, let's just talk about the 37 doublers, right? You're talking about Brighton assets, so potentially your Jao Pedros, your Van Hex of the world, uh, potentially even Pascal Gross when it comes down to it. Newcastle as well. Um, your Isak, your Gordons. I wouldn't be so sure about it, investing into Newcastle defender now just because the def defense is in absolute tatters. Um, United, obviously, you've got Garnacho is a really good budget pick, potentially. Um, you know, I know some people will laugh at Fernandes as well. Um, defensively, I guess Dallow, depending on, you know, whether Shaw, Shaw is fit around then, you've got Shaw. But in the short term, in terms of all, all the double gaming 37 players, like I like your Isaks of the world. Um, if you can obviously have Gordon back next week, you can go for Gordon too. In terms of the short term, or like if you're just um, ignoring, for example, gaming 34, I, I still think it makes more sense to to make some of the short term transfers, you know, focus towards some Liverpool and Arsenal players this week, for example, uh, or even Man City ultimately, right? Because as I, what, like the reason why I've gone for Guardiola myself, which is probably going to be in line with your thinking, Jim, is, um, you know, going for someone like Guardiola is going to be helpful for our bench boost on 37. He'll have a double game week then. And in the short term, Man City have a lot of great short term fixtures, right? You're talking about Luton, um, Crystal Palace, which is a great fixture as well. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, for me as well, since I have a doubt with Gusto and, and his availability, whether he has an injury at all, um, it would make more sense, obviously, for me to go there. Um, whom, whom to start, Solanke or Foden? I would probably go Solanke personally. Uh, what transfers did I make? So I did a minus eight overall. Um, Bruno to Salah, Watkins to uh, Muniz, and also Doughty to Guardiola. Alternative captaincy for this game if chasing rank. Um, hmm. I mean, honestly, I think Haaland could be a good alternative captain, right? Because if you've got Haaland in your team and everyone's going to captain Salah, you're still going to get probably 120%, maybe even more of Haaland. Havertz or Saka for a two-week punt? Um, I'd probably go for Saka. It depends really on, obviously Saka is more expensive, so it comes down to whether or not you actually um, have enough money to maybe go for someone else as an alternative, right? So let's say if you spent that extra Saka money, like does it re reduce you away from other options? I don't know that right now. How far does minus eight drop your rank? That's a good question. I mean, we could we could see, I can have a look at my live rank right now and just see um, what, what the live ranks are in di different areas. Let me have a look. So, it seems like, hmm, I can't really see it, to be fair. Not sure what's the easiest way, maybe I can just check my local tier statistics on live FPL. That could help out. No, I don't think that works. Does anybody have like a quick, easy way of checking like what, what points like people are at certain ranks? Maybe I can just check um, hmm, live leagues potentially. That could work. Maybe I can go in FPL game week and just have a quick look. Like what 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 how many points are people in the top one? So actually, yeah. So I am three three six two in the world. Um people in the top one thousand, so basically people around nine hundred and ninety-nine, around one thousand, they're at nineteen twenty-nine points. I'm at nineteen forty-four. Um apparently I've got one point four more team value than the average top one thousand player. Um so if I take a minus eight, uh, presumably, I'd, I guess I'd drop to 800, 900 in the world, something like that. So I'm 15 points above. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll only drop to like 700, 800. And then hopefully, of course, the game week will go well for us. Um, but we'll see, of course. So I'm expecting a pretty big red arrow. But I mean, this is what happens, right? I wildcarded a little bit earlier. It didn't work out so well, but I'm ready. I mean, I took that punt. 
uh, knowing the risks, and you know we have to take some hits just like everyone did in previous weeks. Um, my minus eight, I'll probably put that in chat. Um, oh, sorry, OP talent as well had a super chat first. Let's go for that. Bench one, Madison, Bowen, or Muniz. Honestly, I'd probably consider benching Madison. Um, maybe side with Bowen in this fixture. It's going to be a, a good differential there. Um, yeah, I agree. You've actually done the same same, same thoughts as me. So also bench one of Udogi, Regulon, and Zabarni. So I kind of like... So let's say if you're betting on Bowen, right? I kind of like hedging towards a certain result. So let's say if you think West Ham will score, um, presumably you'd imagine that Udogi would lose his clean sheet as well. So I kind of like the idea of just benching Udogi in this situation. So I think that makes sense. But I, I can see you've benched Zabarni. I mean, personally, the way I see it, right, is Crystal Palace is the worst offense um, like that any of these teams are facing. Well, actually, no. Uh, no, I would agree. Yeah, it's Crystal Palace is the worst offense that any of your defenders are facing. So I would keep my, my Bournemouth double defense. Um, as far as Regulon, he's got good attacking upside. So I think you can justify sort of playing Regulon over Udogi. I'd probably just, you know, bench my, my Spurs players this week and just... Um, Hope that obviously your differentials in terms of Regulon and, and, and Muniz, let's say, or even Madison, um, or sorry, Bowen over Madison would, would work out well in that case. Hope that sort of works out. I, I'm just going to quickly check if I missed any other super chats. No, I don't think I have. Uh, but quickly going back to chat as well. Gusto was training. Yep, that's apparently what we've heard so far. I'll have a look and see if there's any leaks as well. So let's have a quick look. <clears throat> no team leaks, as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I can see. And that's pretty much it. Apparently Gusto trained, which of course is nice. Hi, friends. Sorry, Robinson from Fulham or Ike Nuri. I'd rather go Ike Nuri, I think. Just the, the attacking potential is there. Burnley is a great fixture anyways. Um, Burnley and Nottingham Forest, both poor attacks. But yeah, you know, I'd take that chance. F football has Messi and Ronaldo. Basketball has... <laughs> I'm not going to read the rest of that. But I appreciate that, Kanan. Um, thank you, mate. Basketball technically also has um, Michael Jordan, does it not? Um, John says, Nuri, Guardiola, Bradley, who to buy? I think I like Guardiola if you... If you don't have that, I mean, if you, let's say, are going to free at 34, I really like Guardiola the most. Um, if you're not free at 34, I think Nuri and Guardiola are both your options. Bradley, I think, is, is a very, very good short-term player. Um, but it just depends, right? Because Bradley could very well just be a future transfer out as well. So I think that's a slight concern in terms of how short-term that move is going to be. Is Haaland worth keeping? Absolutely. I mean, he's good at Dublin giving 37. His fixtures only get better from here on out. Uh, and, and ultimately, yeah, he's, he's, he is worth keeping. Best keeper to buy a wild card at 35. Um, Pickford, probably. Pickford, I would say. Uh, or, or Raya, even, if you can afford Raya. Did I minus 8? I did minus 8, indeed. Um, I'll probably just make it up my pinned comment, to be fair. Oh, no. I've just ruined my pinned comment there. Um, but just put that in the ether for a moment. However, uh, instead of Madison for minus 4... I mean, are you saying you're taking Madison out of your team for a minus four? I'd probably say that's not not exactly worth it. Taylor and McAllister for a minus four? Hmm. Who's Taylor? Are, are you talking about are you talking about getting the Burnley player in for a minus four? I mean McAllister makes sense for a minus four potentially. Just depends on obviously who you don't have. Uh, Richards is probably unavailable for this week, by the way, for anyone going for Richards, but apparently he's going to be fit for game 33-34. Um, Lurendron says, how's it, Fran? I did Sun to Salah and Watkins Darwin. I think that makes sense. Should I take a hit for Osho to Aitnuri? Your backline is Zabarni, Gabriel, and... and I, I think your, your, your backline actually looks pretty good, Lurendron. I'd probably not take the hit. I'd probably avoid it. Alfred, hope you're doing well. Uh, by Muniz or Darwin. It just depends. Like, if, if, if it's not an additional minus four, I would definitely go Darwin over Muniz, but... For me, Darwin is an initial minus four compared to Muniz, so that's why I didn't really want to go there. And I'm not 100% sure that he starts versus Sheffield United. Uh, Phil with an F, thank you so much for the support once again. Um, been around an absolute OG too, so thank you. Hope you're doing well. 
Can you draft a wildcard 31 team with 334 in mind? I mean, I did it previously earlier in the stream, so you can probably find it. Um, I kind of just talked about my thoughts in terms of wildcard and particularly with the 3 at 34 tangent. So if you go a little bit behind on the stream and you probably screamed, uh, scroll towards the section where you can see I'm making transfers, um, that's probably the segment you want to kind of find. Uh, Omer says, is Reglan expected to start? Yeah, I think he is expected to start. Considering replacing uh, with Madison with Luis Diaz. From, I actually like Madison for Luis Diaz and minus four. I really like that. I do really like that move because obviously this is Luis Diaz for Sheffield United at home. Hopefully he starts. And Madison just hasn't been playing too well recently. And if, if let's say the issue with Madison is that he's obviously, you know, been dealing with his knock and he's just not playing well. I mean, it makes sense, obviously, that we're going to continue to see really bad Madison minutes for the next two fixtures. So I kind of like the minus four, 100%. Uh, Aitnuri Regulon, I would play Aitnuri over Regulon. I have Odegaard, but should I transfer out Son for Saka? No, I, I, I wouldn't do that. I find Gordon to Salah, Watkins, Muniz, and Botman to Aitnuri for minus four. I think that makes sense. Hopefully you... I mean, it depends whether you have a free hit as well, to be fair. Um, Andre says, Hi, Fran. Just want to say that last minute swap between Garnacho and Palmer, captain was still huge. Was huge. Still a red arrow. And now it's at a top 250k. Awesome. Did, did I convince you to, to, to not captain Garnacho? Um, I'm, I'm glad I did. Uh, bench one. Muniz, Foden, Palmer, Son. I'd probably bench Muniz in your situation. If I had Foden, I'd be playing Foden right now. Hi, Fran. Madison, Madison to Foden. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that move. Um, Anonius, thanks, Ryan. Love your content. Thank you for loving the content. Um, the Red Cup debate says Isak or Holland. I'd probably still go Holland. Um, Solanke or Foden. I would go with Solanke, personally. Um, start Sarabia or Kunha. I would start Sarabia because I'm not 100% sure that Kunha starts. Or, or is it Kunha? Sorry, Kunha, probably. Um... Start Gusto, Zabanya, or Poro. I'd probably start Zab I'd start Poro still. Um, last minute was like if Garnacho had a great game as her fault. Fair enough. Well, Garnacho didn't even play 60 minutes, so that so that seems like a good decision. Um so Saka or Odegaard, I would go Saka still. I mean, I like I love my penalty takers, so I, I would always go Saka over Odegaard. But it, it, when there's situations, obviously, where let's say maybe Saka and Odegaard, you know, Saka maybe has, you know, doubtful minutes, you could always go Odegaard, to be fair. I'm just going to quickly refresh the stream, because I think um, it's lagging a bit on my side. Uh, captain Isak or Saka? I would definitely just Captain Saka if you really wanted to go differential. Um, bro, can I see your bench? I mean, you can see my bench in the comments. Um, as I said, I, I don't really have the aspect ratio to show uh, my full team right now. Oh, maybe I could actually try. Maybe we could just crop out Neto, can't we? If we crop out Neto, how does this look for you guys? I think you can just about see the team. Not too bad. Not too bad, not too good, but it is what it is. So, um, yeah. I hope that works. Uh, Gusto seen in training. Yep, I heard that as well. Any cheaper options other than Guardiola? 4.7. 4.7, hey. Um, for this week, I mean, you could probably go Bradley. You could probably go Bradley. Hey, friends, start Smith or Gusto or Van Heck? Um, I'd probably start Smith, personally. Isak or Muniz? Um, I would start Isak or, or go Isak if, if that's the choice. Basically, right, I you always make me nervous when you keep red flag players first on your bench. <laughs> nah, we, we, we love the auto subs here. Although I don't too, do too much of the auto sub stuff with my starting team. I, I, I don't like, um, you know, making, I, I don't like the, the full auto, auto sub sort of workarounds. I won't say the, the um, slightly impolite term of how to describe that behavior. But uh, yeah, is asking a CC on a hit about hits appropriate? Of course it is. I mean, I, I'm technically on two hits, to be fair. Um, start Garnacho, Solanke, I would start Solanke. Hey, Fran, McNeil over Sarabia. Oh, that's an interesting choice. I mean, I like Sarabia because I think he's on penalties, right? You know, I prefer my penalties and, and, and corners and set pieces and things like that. Um, so ultimately, it's your decision. So I, I quite like going for... Um, my penalty takers, my, my set piece takers. And I don't think McNeil is, you know, that much better than Sarabia. Yes, of course, his double 
is maybe a little bit better than Sarabia's, but I think Sarabia is just a flat out better asset than McNeil. We've also seen sometimes you can see McNeil playing almost as a left back at times. So positionally, even I think Sarabia is clear of him. And yeah, that's pretty much what I would come down to. I'm just going to quickly have a, have a read through if we can, if we can see any leaks today. Um, hopefully that will sort of illustrate where we're sort of thinking. No, it still seems like there's no team leaks whatsoever, so it is what it is. Um, maybe in the, over the next 52 minutes we'll get something juicy. There are obviously some um, FPL content creators or even Twitter leakers that usually do come through with leaks, despite there not being sort of any big leaks that we could expect from like a team like Man City and things like that, so something to think about as well. But it doesn't actually seem like we have any leaks right now. Uh, by by Aitnuri or Kunha, uh, Kunha, Kunha. I'd probably go. Um, I'd probably go Aitnuri Nuri personally because I I'm not sure if Cunha was Cunha right. Cunha is going to start. So yeah. Hey Fran, what an amazing debut season as FPL. Fran. To be fair, yeah, you're right. This is a debut season, is is isn't it? Um, F ish. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it's been nice to switch to FPL Fran as well. A lot less longer than you know Total Tactics FPL. So, um, wishing you green arrows as well. You think Captain Salah over Saka this game is a good idea? I mean, absolutely it is in, in, in my books. You know, you're never 100%. Like, for example, we've seen a lot of fixtures in the past where, let's say, um, Saka has maybe played 60, 70 minutes versus a team that they've absolutely demolished, and, and then he gets subbed off for even half-time substitutions with Saka. And we know he's been suffering from fatigue, whereas Sal, on the other hand, looks extremely fit. So um, I think transferring Odegaard to Salah makes a lot of sense, J-Wavy, 100%. Uh, Philip says, hi, Fran. Would you have taken the hit for Guardiola now, given the, the current rumors regarding Gusto in a similar position and don't love the hit, but also don't love possible power in? Yeah, I, I think so, right? Because I'm not 100% sure um, about the Gusto. This is also probably Gusto's worst fixture when it comes down to it. So I don't really mind taking a hit for Guardiola when he gets to face an Aston Villa team that has Watk has like doesn't have Watkins uh, flat out. And then... When it comes to, let's say, Man United versus Chelsea, I still think United's going to score versus Chelsea. So I don't mind the hit all in all. Now, if I had 100% confirmation that Gusto's fine um, and I knew he was fit and ready to play, I'd probably just have Gusto on my team, but I, I don't have that sort of um, thinking, right? Mohamed says, and thank you for the super chat as well, bench Muniz or Tony if I bring in Nunez in, is it also worth it to bring Bradley in this late? I mean, if you really have three bad, like, okay, sorry, let's say if you have your, your third defender and he's very bad, he's unlikely to play, maybe he's Pau Torres, maybe he's a Luton defender, I think it makes sense to still bring Bradley in. I know it's late, but I still like the transfer, to be honest. As far as Muniz and Tony, I would definitely bench Muniz. Uh, Tony, for me, has a good fixture. And if you bring in Nunez, then, of course, yeah, understand, you can still bring Bradley, too. But once again, the question is about whether you have a third bad defender. For me this week, I do have a third bad defender. That's why I went for Guardiola. If you want to go for Bradley, go for it. Minus eight for Zabarni to Guardiola. I don't think that makes any sense. Uh, Zabarni, if I had Zabarni this week in my team, I would not be going for minus four to Guardiola, personally. And I also have to put you in timeout. Sorry about that, just because of spam. Um, all the best to you as well, Philip. We'll let, let, uh, we'll, we'll let it go down the wire. Yeah, that's totally fine. I mean, another thing too is that the people confirming that Gusto's been in training, I, I don't think are super authoritative leakers right it's not like they have a lot of precedence um with their leaks but yeah but apparently gusto has been in in in, in sort of gym gym room training so that's nice of course when it comes to gusto oh well yeah so that's nice obviously for people who actually plan to play gusto but i, I still take this opportunity to go by the all and i also think once again long term it's probably going to pay out hopefully where Guardiola could do well this week, and not to mention um, Guardiola is going to be in my gaming 37 team as a Man City doubler. Um, Kilman or Bradley, I'd go Bradley. I just think Kilman, just to, like, you don't want to be investing into Wolves just because you want a Wolves defender, right? The only reason why we're investing into Ait Nuri is because he's an attacker. So that's why I wouldn't really rate Kilman at all. Um, can I check Discord? Probably not today, to be honest. 
Chat's still flowing a lot. Prophel says, need your help. Should I start Mateta or sell Gordon from McAllister? I'd just start Mateta, my friend. Um, Mateta's fine. Play Branthwaite or Chris Richards. Um, you kind of have to play Branthwaite because I think apparently Chris Richards is injured um, for this week. So Rob, you're going actual wild card. I think it depends whether you're free at 34 or not, right? If you if you got free at 34, I kind of think Garnacho makes sense. Another question as well is how often are you going to play Sarabia in the short term? If you're going to play Sarabia or Garnacho a lot in the short term, I would actually still prefer Sarabia no matter what. Hey, friends, start Richarlison or Garnacho. I'd probably take the risk on Richarlison, but I'm not 100% sure that he starts, if I'm honest. Gusto out, Bradley in with a minus four. I wouldn't take Gusto out of my team, guys. Like I, I think Gusto is still a really good hold. Uh, why keep Sun? Because uh, he's Sun and the fixtures are still good. I mean, West Ham is still a good fixture, is it not? And obviously, we're, we're planning to keep some basically until the end of the season because he's also going to double gimme 37. Uh, do I do team reviews? Uh, f um, FPL Tobias asks. I mean, I, I do. Um, but I usually offer sort of one-to-one -one service with like people who are members of the channel so that I can I, they can more easily access me. Um, but yeah. Um, Stefan says, hi, Fran. How are you? Best Ollie Watkins replacement, Wildcard 35. Um, I'd say Darwin, personally. First of all, like, if Darwin's not someone that's tough to go into, I'd just go Darwin, um, straight off the bat. Otherwise, it's obviously your, your Cunhas, your Matetas, your, um, even Muniz, just if you value him highly as a single game week player, right? Because, yes, of course, Muniz lacks a fixture, but Wolves arguably have a pretty tough fixture in addition, right? It's an Arsenal fixture. As far as, um, Mateta, you never know. I mean, his minutes might not be 100% guaranteed by game week 34, but yeah, I, I generally kind of quite like uh, Mateta. If, if you really like, because it's nice for Wildcard 35 too. Another thing that I'll mention is because let's say if you think Mateta's minutes could actually get worse in the long term, you've got that insurance of the Wildcard 35. If you have, let's say, and also Semenyo is another option that you want to think about as well. Um, hi, friend. How are you? you? Need your help. Udogi, Gabriel, Regulon. I don't think you, I don't think you need to be um, taking a hit to bring Guardiola in. I think you've got good defenders this week. And hope the best for you. Can I message retracted? I said Richards is injured apparently for this week, I think. I think he's got a small injury. And he, he might not feature this week. But that's what I've heard. I don't know if that's 100% sure. I think he's going to be back for Gaming 34, if that's your question as well, Henry. So I wouldn't worry about... If you were bringing Chris, Chris Richards in within your sort of team in FPL, I still think it's fine in the sense that you're going to be playing him in Gaming 34. How long is Ariola out? Um, seems like a short term, probably one week, two weeks. We, we're not 100% sure when he's coming back. Uh, what's up, Fran? Hope you're doing well, Yala. Uh, just checked Chelsea TikTok. Yeah, exactly. Gusto was in training, but it was not in grant. It was in the gym. That's exactly another thing that I was thinking about too. But it still means that, you know, in theory, that it's not. it does seem like it's an awful injury. So um, he's probably actually fit, right? It just depends on whether he gets rested over these one or two games. Um, Luan says, hey, Fran, thoughts on a minus eight for Darwin, Salah, Bradley, and Van Heck taking out KDB Watkins. I think these are good moves, right? I think those are good moves because Watkins, Ake, Doughty, KDB, you probably don't want these players over Salah, so it's fine. Diaz for cheap over Salah. I mean, if you really can't afford Salah in a nice, easy way, I can understand going for Diaz, but keep in mind, of course, a lot of people are going to be captaining Salah, um, and he is obviously, you know, far above, for me, the, the you know, before hindsight, best option for the captaincy this week. Uh, those twins, thank you for your super chat. Uh, opinions on Sun to Sarabia to afford Salah and Darwin. I, I can understand going for that, right? Like, I've got pretty good team value, so I really want to keep Son in my team. And also, I've got no wild card left, so I really want uh, Son for Gaming 37. Um, but in your situation, obviously, I think it does make sense actually to go Son to Sarabia um, to afford Sal and Darwin. I think those are good moves, right? It, it, it also, and the question too is, you know, what, what are your alternative routes to Sal? For some people, it has to be through Son. For others, it might be through Foden. Um, some people, obviously, like myself, we can go out of some other players too, but. It just comes down to, you know, what options you have remaining. Chelsea not playing until Thursday and really do depend on Gusto. Yeah, I think Gusto is brilliant. But another thing, too, is like how how likely is that clean sheet going to be versus United? So I think I'll take my chances um, with maybe just going for the Guardiola transfer here. Hi, Fran. Can you rank Solanke, Darwin, Isak for the remaining fixtures? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think if you're free at 34, I'd say Isak is the best option. But obviously, because Game Week 34 is a double, I just go Darwin, Solanke, Isak in that order. Just because, of course, you need to take care of the double game week in 34 first, and then Isak becomes even more important after 34, where he has Sheffield United at home, and then a double. Uh, play in Uruguay, the all, I just, I would still go, um, I would still go with Guardiol, I would say. I'd still go Guardiol. I, I really just like, you know, a Man City team playing without, or playing against a, an Aston Villa team without Watkins. Now, obviously, Bailey can do well, Tillemans can do well, even Musa Diaby can do well, so 
those are risks, but I'll take that risk. Um, can I put up a wildcard team suggestion? I think you can scroll earlier back into the stream. I did kind of go through wildcard drops as well with other people earlier and I explained my thoughts on a wildcard too. Uh, Basil Biju, thank you so much for your super chat. I can't really see any text associated with your super chat, so if you want to ask any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. I'll look out for your name in the future. Um, hope you're well. Any any information about Trippier? I mean, he's been training apparently, um, but we all know that Eddie Howe is a pretty big fraud, so I really don't have any news on Trippier. Um, start Palmer as of this week. I still start Palmer. Start Sarabia Palmer. I'd start Palmer. And Palmer's at home, guys. I would I would always take the, the home player, considering that United aren't a really good defense either. What do you think about a better starter this week, Chris Wood or Garnacho? I'd still say Chris Wood, personally. Um, Chelsea double game weeks. Yep, Chelsea will have plenty of double game weeks coming up soon. Did you take a minus eight or did you use free transfers? I did take a minus eight. That's correct. Uh, will White start? I'm pretty sure he will. Um, how about Bradley, bro? I like Bradley a lot as a short-term pick, but another thing, too, is that I kind of need to make sure that some of my transfers are also planned for the long term. So because I don't have a wild card left, Game Week 37 is sort of in my mind. So Guardiola is going to be quite helpful for, for them, hopefully. Um, what is the best 5 mil replacement for Pau? Wild card in 35. Um, hmm, wild card in 35. I would just simply go with... Hmm, tough question, actually. I'd probably, I'd probably say I, Yuri. I did take a minus 8, that's correct. Uh, the minus 8 was Bruno for Salah. And... Um, Watkins for Muniz, and Doughty for Guardiola. Why did I not choose Mateta? Just because I think Mateta's going to play versus Chelsea and Liverpool. If I keep this structure here where I have effectively eight attackers, it's unlikely that I would have enjoyed playing Mateta versus those two, those two teams. And and then another thing too is I wasn't 100% certain about his minutes or Crystal Palace's offense or the fact that he's on penalties. So I prefer Muniz because I think Fulham are a bit better attack or at least that they've been able to play through Muniz a lot better, so just more confidence in Muniz overall um, as a single game week, and I just think he's a monstrous pick, and that's pretty much it. Um, Isak or Diaz a captain? I'd go Diaz. I'd take that punt. If you really don't want to go Salah captain, I'd go Diaz. I'm also going to have to suspend you for a bit. No spam in the chat, please. If you guys are here as well, do feel free to like and subscribe. Really would appreciate that. I don't even know, actually, are we close to 28k subs? I haven't even checked today, but wouldn't mind finding out. So that would be the case. Not so close, but if you if you guys could bring us there, that would be ideal. A uh, netto replacement or long term? I mean, once again, depends whether you're free at 34 or not. I mean, as I said, I, I prefer Ryan Petrovic the most. However, if you don't have a free at 34, like, I mean, Pickford could be a really, really good transfer as well. Because if you think about it, Pickford is also going to have a really good fixture on gaming 37. And he doubles in gaming 34. Um, start Petrovic or Pickford may seem like an easy question, but I see no chance of Petrovic keeping a clean sheet. I think so. It's for me. I would start. Um, I would start Pickford probably. I mean, hmm. I mean, I, I know it, it feels like Petrovic, but then I also think, yeah, I, I agree with you. Actually, like Everton are the better defense now. Newcastle are pretty hamstrung for injury, so I think it actually brings it pretty close. I'd probably tempt myself with Pickford because a lot of people have moved into Petrovic lately. They're probably going to play Petrovic. Why not go for Pickford? In in your opinion, how many hits justifies a wild card? I don't think it really matters. I, I think maybe like a minus 16 justifies wild card. Minus 16, minus 20, that sort of territory. But it also depends. Like every season is 100% different. So you, you just need to sort of assess as appropriate. Some weeks it actually just makes sense to take minus 4 or minus 8, and that's totally fine. Is there Saka news? Apparently Saka uh, was in training today, so I think he's fine. Is Holland essential? I wouldn't say so, no. But obviously if you've got high team value, I think he kind of is. Like a really good pick that you should go with as opposed to ignore. Start Muniz or Solanke, I would start Solanke. Thoughts on Guardiola and Jackson over Gusto and Darwin in Wildcard 31. Um, it's actually not a bad route. The only thing, and you've got a free hit 34 as well. I, I, I quite like it. It's, it's quite, a, quite an interesting differential path, to be honest. And it also gives you, you know, technically one more additional um, fixture on giving 37. So I quite like it. Start Cunha or Garnacho. I'd probably go, I'd probably go, hmm, I'd probably go Garnacho reluctantly, just because I don't know whether Cunha starts. Is Holland essential? I think I've answered that already. Um, Kirk has news. No news. I think he's very likely to play, but we've also seen plenty of benchings. Long way away, but thoughts on I think Eze is brilliant for Gaming 34. He's probably actually the, the most interesting midfielder, right? Neto replacement long term. The midfielder, only bench was left. Sarabia. Start Onana or Petrovic. I'd probably go Petrovic still. Uh, Neto replacement long term. The midfielder, only bench boost left. Yeah, I've answered that question. I still think it's Sarabia personally. 
it's kind of boring to go with a side grade sort of move, but I think it just makes the most sense. Is Bradley long term? Not at all. Why did I take a minus four for Guardiola? Just not that much confidence in Chelsea getting a clean sheet versus United and not 100% certain about Gusto's fitness. Um, would you captain Saka slash Diaz slash Holland? Um, I'd probably captain Holland or Diaz, I would say. Because I'm not 100% certain whether Saka is going to play 90 minutes of football this week. Uh, Nunez captain or stick with Salah? I would go Salah for sure. Um, turn into Ariola minus four. Ariola's not even going to play, so I don't see why that's a good transfer at all. Um, hey, Fran, should I do Gusto to Bradley for free? I mean, why would you go? Uh, why, why do you want to go down to Gusto? Is, is it because you've got a wild card later down the line? Because I think Gusto is a really good hold for bench boost 37. Um, but if you want to go Bradley, I'd probably go out of a different player instead. I don't think you need to necessarily go out of Gusto. Is Nico Jackson an option at all considering the fixtures? I think it's, yeah, I think it's a good option, Breno. Uh, turn it to Kelleher, minus four. I think it's okay, but it's it's risky territory, right? Because you don't know whether Kelleher is going to get gaming 34 fixtures. Uh, hey, Frank, can I del delay Darwin until gaming 33? I think that's fine. You can you can wait for gaming 33 for sure. Why no Mateta instead of Muniz? I think Mateta just has worse fixtures leading up to 34, which sort of makes it quite different for me. Like, I could actually go for um, another defender instead and, and sort of have a team that's sort of maybe like a 4-4-2 on gaming 34, and I still think it would be fine planning towards gaming 37. Uh, hi, Fran. Havertz or Mbumo? I would just go... I'd go Havertz. I mean, Mbumo could still very well come off the bench, right? Because maybe they're still trying to manage his injury long-term. Um, Bradley is not long-term. Sell sign for Saka. I don't think it makes sense. Bench Udogi or Guardiola this week. Um, I'd bench Udogi. Darwin or McAllister? I would probably go Darwin. But if you really think that there's a little bit of upside, and you obviously McAllister has become incredible recently with Endo at the six. Um... So that makes a huge difference. And I think McAllister is a bit of an upside punt um, in terms of obviously his sort of price price range, not not in the sense that he's actually better than Darwin. Um, Joe, I'm, 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 I'm wisely skipping that. So unlucky, Joe. Um, Yala says, do we have any thoughts on Ortega? Ederson is not out long-term. I think also a Man City leaker, uh, Main Road, also mentioned that Ederson is not out long-term at all. Shall I take a second hit to remove Gusto? I don't think it makes sense to remove Gusto this week, guys. Uh, what teams are targeting the new future? I mean, City, first of all. City's actual short-term fixtures are really good. Um, and if you miss Liverpool this week, then of course, you're probably going to ignore Liverpool a little bit until gaming 34. Um, Newcastle, I still think, is very strong, personally. right? Good fixtures in the short term and in the long term. Uh, outside of Newcastle, generally speaking, maybe you can consider Chelsea a little bit as well. But once again, Chelsea is more for next week and onwards. Um, and also, of course, a little bit more free at 34 orientated. It just really comes down to whether you have a free at 34 or not, right? Like your short term, long term is going to vastly change depending on what strategy you have in place. Uh, Darwin or Slanky, I, I would still probably go with Darwin. Uh, Conrad Lamb, thank you so much for your super chat on wild cards. Same as yours, except Foden for Neto. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Same as, uh, except Foden for Neto and Kelleher. I mean, do you have more money in the bank than me? Fair play. The Fly Naga, thank you for your super chat. Uh, Sun to Sala gets me 10 doubles in 34 with a minus 8. One each in 31 and 34. Versus Odegaard to Sala gets me 10 doubles in 34 with a minus 12. Um, I mean, have you already used... I can't remember if you've already used your wild card. So I think one thing that I'll ask is whether you have a wild card left. Because obviously if you go Odegaard to Sala, um, it could actually still be very strong keeping Sun for giving me 37. But if you have a wild card anyways, I'd go out of Sun. Why go for Guardiola? Because I'm going to plan him. I'm going to play him for the future, and he's also going to be a part of my gaming 37 team. Um, minus four for an Arsenal defender. I mean, it depends which one it is, but I think it's it's probably going to be a good play. Uh, Sun or Saka to Salah? I'd still go out of Sun first. Should I sell Matters? I think this is a decent opportunity to actually jump out of Madison. Yeah, it does make sense. Considering it also seems like he's unfit personally. Um, I think it sort of makes sense to go out of Madison. Like, we've seen really reduced minutes from him. It seems like he's injured. He's playing injured, potentially. Not a great look for Madison. Uh, Fran is Foden, Salah, Sun, Saka, Palmer, Overkill. No, it's not. I mean, there's a world where I could have easily gone Luis Diaz, right? Uh, I'm going to quickly check if we have any sort of team leaks and sort of um, potential news. It doesn't seem like it, to be fair.
Uh, no team news, it seems like. Saliba or Ben White, I'd still go Saliba personally. But I mean, I mean to be fair, actually, I, I think, look, if you think Ben White's nailed for the rest of the season, I'd still, I, I, I would actually go Ben White over Saliba. What's the plan for gaming 32? Um, we can roll. We can go for Petrovic. We can maybe go for an Everton defender. So those are our options. Um, Yala says, do you know why people are prioritizing Brentford def a Brighton defenders like Van Heck from their fixtures? Seems like a challenging. I think it's just because they're like, if you're wild carding and you've got a free at 34, um, Van Heck makes sense as just a glue guy for your eventual double fixture for Brighton, right? In gaming 37. If Shipier starts today, he'll be a differential. I mean, absolutely, he'll be a differential. Uh, goalkeeper transfer worth minus four. You've got Dubravka and Ariola. No, I don't think it's worth a minus four at all. I mean, just play Dubravka this week, right? Andre? Uh, Larav, thank you for your super chat. Garnacho to Havertz and Bench Muniz. I would just play Muniz, my friend, honestly. I mean, what's the value of going out of... Are, is it because you've got a wild card in the back pocket, Larav? If you do, I mean, you could maybe go Havertz, but I would still probably keep Garnacho if you don't have a wild card left. Is Ake out for the season? Uh, no, but I mean, we've seen Ake play with Guardiola. You just saw the, the lineup versus Arsenal. You literally, it was literally just Guardiola and Ake together. So Guardiola plays a very advanced role in this team that I, I don't think Ake can necessarily replicate either in terms of holding width. So Ake can play sort of traditional left back, like a very flat left back, but he doesn't play like an advanced left back either. And I think Guardiola's position in the team is, is relatively safe. And also, if I can guarantee Guardiola's minutes in the short term, I'm pretty sure he's going to play at least one of the fixtures in game 37, which I think is perfectly fine with me. Uh, Gustav says, start Foden Muniz. I would actually just start Foden. Hi, Fran. Gabriel, Pau, Doughty, Sanessi, Gusto. Should I get Guardiola or Nuri? I mean, if you guys like, you know, attacking your fixtures, I think I I Nuri makes a little bit more sense in the short term. But as I said, because I don't have a wild card 35 planned, Guardiola sort of has a little bit more long-term value than a Knight Nuri does for me. Uh, Rectim says, minus four for Bailey to Garnacho and hold till double gaming 37. No, it's not worth it because Gar this isn't a very good Garnacho fixture. And we also know that it seems like Garnacho is a little bit tired. Um, I don't know if Garnacho's minutes are going to be very good for this week. So I wouldn't take that minus four. Uh, worth a minus four if you don't have a starting keeper. Yeah, of course it's worth a minus four. I'm going to have to put you in timeout, though. I'm sorry about that because I've answered the question. Uh, Jim says, bring Holland in for Tony for a minus four. I mean, I, th I think it, it could still be worth it. Yeah. I'm going to have to say yes. I'm not sure if you'll recoup it, basically, within this week. And yes, of course, Tony has a great fixture in Gaming 33, but Holland's competing fixture is Luton, which is incredible. So um, where do I calculate expected points? Do, do it myself? Um, no. So you can, first of all, look at sort of uh, gambling odds potentially to sort of recalculate points. Um, another alternative is you use a sort of fixture projection model. Um, so Fantasy Football Hub has, has one, um, and you can see obviously the link in my description for that. But the alternative one I would say is FPL Review, which I still think is um, the best model that we have right now for expected points. So fplreview.com is what it is. Um, hi, friends. Start Muniz or Sarabia? I would say I would still start Sarabia personally, right? Um, there are some small, small doubts for Muniz, so I think Sarabia is a bit safer. And he's got a slightly better fixture, too. Slightly better. Because Nottingham Forest, I would say, is a better defense than, let's say, Burnley is. Uh, I'm not promoting gambling, just... You, well, yeah, it's a tough one. I would say there are odds that you can check without actually having to place money on. Um, obviously, do not promote gambling on this channel at all. Um, Gabriel, right, Nuri, clean sheet odds versus attacking Burnley. Yeah, I mean, Gabriel's clean sheet odds are, are much clearer. So, very, very different. If you couldn't afford Guardiola, who would, who, who, who would I go for? I mean, maybe Aitnuri, potentially. Maybe Bradley, just for the short term. Start Gusto or Udogi. I would probably go... I'd probably go Udogi, personally. Hi, friends. Start Zabani or Poro. I would go Poro. Bench with Charleston or Palmer this week. Bench with Charleston. Diaz slash Mateta or Darwin slash Garnacho National Wildcard. I kind of like Diaz Mateta, honestly. Um, Rakhtin says, Bailey, Gusto, Morris, or Dowdy. Start one this game week. Um... Who, okay, hmm. pretty tough one for Morris, if I'm honest. I would actually just, I'd just start, I'd start Gusto and then Bailey second sub, or Bailey first sub, if that makes sense, and then Morris third sub, and then and then Doughty last, in that order. Bring Wood or Muniz? I'd still prefer Muniz. Panadol, what's the question? Minus eight for Garnacho to Luis Diaz? I think it's a good transfer. If, if you really needed a, a, an attacker this week and, and you don't really like what Garnacho could provide to the table, yeah. So Barnier Gusto, I'd still play. I'd still probably play Gusto. Best 4.6 defender? Ait Nuri, I would say. Take it a minus 8 punt on Bradley. Hey, I hope he scores a hat-trick too, but I think that's a bit that's that's a little bit of an over-ambitious aim, no? 
Um, how are we? How are we doing in terms of getting towards twenty eight k subs? Could we do it today? I wonder. Well, we just need twelve more subs, guys. Got five hundred you guys in the chat. Maybe you're all subscribed, and that would be fine. Um, but if you're not, if you guys could like to subscribe, that'd be lovely. Love the content. Thank you, Santander. Um, sorry, Gusto or Yudogi. I'd, I'd, I'd still go with Yudogi, just for the slight risk and, and doubt over Gusto, personally. Um, start Foden or Muniz. I'd still start Foden, personally. Just subscribe. Thank you, Pranav. Appreciate that. Um, Captain Holland, son or Darwin. I would actually go with... I would actually go with Holland. If you really wanted to go against Salah... Like, if, for me, wh whenever I go with, let's say, a Liverpool player to, to go against Salah, like, it always feels bad, because it's like... In theory, if Liverpool do well, like most often than not, Salah's doing well. So I kind of like intuitively going against Salah and, and against Liverpool if I really believe that I'm going to go against um, Salah. I think Captain Holland is a good differential. Um, and and you've, you've sort of, I've answered your question as well, uh, Karishma, as well. Uh, you, you prefer men too. Hi, Fran. Would you start um, Pickford or Petrovic? Already starting Gusto. I'd probably start... Pickford, as I said. I think it also kind of feels nice to sort of, if you're not so confident about, let's say, Chelsea's results or their ability to get a clean sheet, it kind of makes sense to actually have a little bit of a of a hedge to two sort of competing outcomes, right? Uh, Victrum 2K says, start Muniz or Sarabia. I'd go Sarabia. Uh, why did I minus 8? Well, because I wanted to get Salah for minus 4, and then I wanted a third defender who was quite good for this week. So I went for my man Guardiola. Uh, start Zabanya or Aitnuri. I think Aitnuri, without a doubt, is probably the option that I would go with because, look, you're looking at a player who's very, very attacking right now compared to Zabanya, who is only really a small set-piece threat. Four subscribers to go. If, if we could push it there, we can try. Van Dijk and Sarabia or Diaz and Aitnuri. I still think I would actually go with um, Diaz and Aitnuri. I really like the attacking options there. Start Garnacho or Semenya or, or Zabanya. I would go... Honestly, I'd probably go with... I'd probably go with Semenya. Because I think Semenyo's minutes are the most guaranteed. And I'm not 100% sure about Garnacho's minutes. He's also away from home. Um, good opportunity to go against Garnacho. And then, ultimately, why not go Semenyo? Madison to Diaz for minus four. I really like that. Did we get to 28k? Let me have a look. Quickly refresh that. I should probably get a live counter up. But I've never done that in my life. Hopefully, we get to do a live counter if we get to um, 28k. Or 30k one day. Um, if you don't owe Neto, who to start over Zabani or Poro? Fair. I mean, I don't think it matters what your keeper is, right? It's just a decision between Zabani and Poro. I would still go with Poro, personally. Um, Guardiola, I agree if I'm chasing rank and no wild card slash free hit. I'd say Guardiola because you're probably going to bench boost Guardiola. 30k subs and, and top 100 in May. I don't know about top 100, but I'll try my best to, to stay within the top 1k. Hopefully we finish top 500 as well. Um, I know I'm gonna set I'm, I'm gonna set myself back a little bit this week. That's fine. Um, I'm 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 willing and, and ready to sort of you know fall down the ranks, but it is what it is. Change Neto to Havertz. Um, I'm not going Havertz for a minus four. I'll say that right now. And I can't even go there because I'm already tripled up in Arsenal. Um, Palmer or Sarabia to play this week. I'd go Palmer first. Start Brathwaite or Nuri. I'd go Nuri. Mitch. Um, start Isak. Yeah, why not? Brown best option for forward five point five in the bank. I mean, if you don't have a wild card. Then I would just go Jao Pedro. If you are planning for the short term, I'd say Kunha is pretty good. Or Kunha is pretty good. Uh, Richarlison or Muniz to start? I would go with Muniz. I think more guarantees that he starts than Richarlison. Start some menu or Palmer? Um, I would actually still go with Palmer. I don't see this. Why? I mean, a lot of people are asking about sort of benching Palmer this week. Why would you want to bench Palmer at home versus United, who are a shocking defense? Son Watkins out for Holland Sarabia. Um, I think that's fine for Holland Sarabia. Actually, no, I wouldn't do it. Sorry, I wouldn't do it. I, I still keep Santa Watkins. Can you just replace Watkins with another sort of forward? Is, is that not possible, Sharon? Watkins, Madison to Darwin Diaz for minus four. That's not too bad. That's not too bad of a minus four. I quite like that one instead. Uh, get Solanke or Muniz. I would, I would still go Solanke if you don't have a free hit 34. Um, start Madison or Diaz. Diaz for sure. Regulon or Poro. I would go Poro. Start Garnacho or Muniz. I would go Muniz. Uh, Captain Salah, Isaka Muniz. Salah for me. Let's do a quick captaincy poll as well. We've got 23 minutes to go anyways. Um, I really doubt a lot of people are going to go against Salah. But um, let's do Salah, Holland. I mean, who else is up there as an option? I guess some people are considering Isak. Um, I'm going to combo Luis Diaz and Darwin. 
for those people who are so inclined. Actually, you know what? Let's just let's just take Isak out as an option. I'll just say other. These are to me the top four options this week. Let's see where people go. I mean, I know there's Saka, right? I know there's Saka, but the thing is, I don't know if I don't I don't know if Saka's gonna play ninety minutes of football. I can't guarantee that for Sluton. So, yeah, we've got a lot of options. Regulon or Gusto? I'd go Regulon. Bowen to Foden for a hit? I don't think it's worth a hit. Has he transferring Guardiol? Yeah, of course. You can see Guardiol on my team. I'm quickly checking back in chat. Oh, Chiselpot, thank you so much again, once again, for dropping a gift of membership. TS has also won it, so congratulations to TS. But once again, thank you so much to Chill the Planet. Was just quickly checking for leaks there. It doesn't actually seem like, unfortunately, we have any leaks today, which is fine. Um, ultimately, what, it's a Fulham fixture. And what's the other game? We've got, I think, Fulham Nottingham Forest. We've got Newcastle Everton and, what, Wolves Burnley, Crystal Palace Bournemouth. I don't think there's going to be major leaks. Unfortunately, we don't have... Muniz news for 100% certainty or, you know, Cunha news for 100% certainty, but yeah, that's that. Uh, I need to Saliba. I don't think that makes sense. Salah seems like the dominant captain in the option. Differential option seems to be Holland as well, which is sort of what we expected, to be fair, um, from the chat. Vikram also says uh, Madison to Saka for minus four. I, I think it's just about worth it, yeah. Especially if you don't have three at 34. Cunha over Muniz. I think that's fine. If you want to go there. Muniz could be a great captain. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I still don't think so. He's away from home. Nottingham Forest is actually a pretty decent defense. As much as they are a bad team. Um, any Gusto news? Apparently he was in training. But I wasn't. I, apparently in training as in in the gym training. Um, R-L-H-P-Y-R-T. Hope you're well. You've already taken a minus four for Salah and Muniz. Do you take another minus four for Aki to Verge uh, slash Saliba or just start Charlie Taylor? Um, I kind of like the the minus four for Verge or Saliba. I think they're both good moves. So I'd, I'd be super comfortable taking that minus four. Havertz instead of Saka, if, no, if you don't have Arsenal. I mean, if you really want to, yeah, I think that's fine. He could be a good differential for sure. Uh, Palmer as a hard choice. I don't think it's hard. I, I would go Palmer for sure. Santa Sala. I think that's also an easy choice if, if, if that's really your only way of getting there. Um, Harry, you never walk alone, says Doughty to White for a minus four, but, the, but then benching Poro. <sighs> just about, I would just say no. I, I would just play Poro personally. Connor Bradley for a minus four is good. I think if you have a really third, like bad third defender for this week. Uh, Wildcard draft. I think you can scroll earlier in the stream when you can see it, that I was making a lot of transfers. Um, and I was talking about the wild card earlier on, so you can have a look at that portion of the live stream segment. Um, hey, Fran, what's up? Should I start Foden or Muniz? I would go with Foden personally. Guardiola Kanji, I would go Guardiola. Uh, minus four for Gabriel. I still think that's worth it. Yep, really, really good defense this week. Um, Liverpool and Arsenal defensive options are super clear of the other options this week, so yeah. <coughs> Kirkus, Knight, Nuri for minus four. Mm, I'd still probably risk playing Kirkus just about um because you never know he could start and, and starting versus crystal palace is great if he gets subbed off at 61 minutes even better um start chris richards or van heck apparently chris richards might not be available this week is what i've heard um so i guess you're going to be stuck with van heck but you can still start chris richards i would say and if he doesn't play he doesn't play watkins to nunez a role i would definitely do watkins to nunez um i don't think rolling is really worth it in, in in a week where you can just get rid of watkins right now Start because watkins will probably drop in price again 
um, and Darwin could rise again too. Uh, Yudogi to Guardiola for a minus four. I don't think it's worth it personally. I would I would just play Yudogi this week. Like Yudogi, I'd be quite safe with. For me, I've got a lot of doubts this week, right? I've got Pau, who's not lovely, um, Gusto, who's a doubt, and then I previously had Doughty, who was also a doubt. Um, e, no, I'm kidding. Um, start with Charles and Garnacho or Yudogi. I would go. I'd start with Charleston, then Yudogi, then Garnacho, probably in that order. Luis Diaz or Martinelli? I'd still go Luis Diaz. Really, really good fixture here. We don't even know if Martinelli's going to start, so a um, bit of risk on Martinelli. Horrible pun. <laughs> Sorry, I tried, Henry. What an end. What an end to the um, to the sub. Palmer for Diaz, minus four. I don't think that's worth it at all. I would keep Palmer for the rest of the season, personally. Um, Kirk has died Nuri for a minus four. I mean... If you really want to do it, you can go for it. I, I don't love the tra I don't love the transfer, but to be fair, I don't love Kirkes either. Uh, but I'm also going to have to put you in timeout because um, I've answered the question. Um, and we don't want spam in the chat. So Isak or Darwin? I think Isak if you're free at 34, Darwin otherwise. What do you think of the Pe Petrovic riot double up? It's my preferred double up personally because unfortunately the Dubravka news was fake. Um, Son Watkins out for Holland Sarabia. I don't really love going Son and Watkins out. I'd rather just Watkins to someone else. Um, but if you really want to go out of Sun, fair enough, you know. If, if you plan on, let's say, Captain Holland gave me 33, fine, go for it. I don't really mind it too much. I don't. I just don't love going out of Sun that much. Would you move out of Madison for a minus four to an Arsenal midfielder? Yeah, I would, I would certainly consider it. Because Madison doesn't seem like he's getting good minutes. He's not playing well or he's injured. So that's tricky. Rico Lewis is starting. I think it's probable. But also, you, you can see that Rico Lewis doesn't have to necessarily play, even if Ake is out. So I don't think Rico, Rico Lewis is not a good punt for me. Uh, Madison to Salah for minus four. I think that's a lovely move. I would definitely do it. Keeper dilemma. You, um, John Ross says, go turn on Ariel as a keeper. Do you play 10 players? I would buy a new keeper, 100%. Um, and, and a keeper till game week 35. Honestly, just go with Raya, right? If you don't, if you already have triple Arsenal, then just go Pickford. So Raya or Pickford. Um, start Sarabia or Muniz. I would go Sarabia. That's probably what I would do. Odegaard or Saka. I would still go Saka, but if you want a differential, Odegaard's fine. Is Gross still any good? Not really. Not until basically the fixtures are better and, and not until after the gaming 34. Uh, hi, friends. Start Madison or Muniz. Um, I'd start Muniz. How sure are we that Salah will play for more than 45 minutes? I'm pretty sure that he'll play at least 60, I would say. Probably 95% sure. But who knows? Like, he could get injured. So I'm not going to hold out for that. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Salah will play. Like, Salah for me is going to play more minutes than Saka. That's for sure. That's my thought, Any, anyways. Uh, E7 says, which combo, Richard slash Son or Gabriel slash Foden? Hmm, I'd go Gabriel, because Gabriel's going to give you a lot more value. I know intuitively we all like Son over Foden, but Gabriel for me is so much better than, than Richard's. Flecken or Verbruggen? Um, in terms of starting this week, I'd go Flecken. Uh, hi, friend. I, Nuri or uh, Bradley? I'd probably, I'd, I'd probably tempt myself for Bradley. Um, Doughty to Bradley for a minus eight. I mean, I hope, I mean, you just talk about one additional hit, right? Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a good transfer. If you had to play Doughty this week, I think it makes sense to go Bradley instead. Um, all the best. Thank you, John Ross. Yep. Trying our best this week. Obviously the hit's going to set us back, but it is what it is. Is two hits worth it for Salah? I think it's worth it. Like, Salah is an incredible option. He's a captaincy option as well. So it, it is a huge swing. Like, I would say minus four is worth it for sure. Minus eight. I mean, I'm doing a minus eight this week, so it is what it is. I'm going to have to put you on mute, though, just because we want to get other questions in the chat. Um, TS says, don't mean to spam, but hoping to figure out Son and Richarlison's situation. Transferring Son to Salah and Salah... Uh, I'm sorry. Transferring Son to Salah to afford Darwin or Richarlison to... I would go Richarlison out, right? Because Richarlison, for me, even if he's going to start, let's say, this week, it's, first of all, he's coming back from an injury, so maybe his minutes, you know, they're trying to manage it. And second of all, I just can't guarantee Richarlison's minutes going forward, whereas I can guarantee Suns. You're also going to get a penalty taker in in Sun, like you're keeping a penalty taker too. Um, and obviously Darwin has a lot of upside, but who knows? He could even be benched for Sheffield United at home. Um, I think you've got some more guarantees by just going out of Richarlison instead, personally. Um, you hit 28k awesome thank you guys so much i haven't tracked because i've been trying to answer as many questions as possible but um yeah i would i would i would i would do that um Hamid, yep i agree with that liverpool limit player choose diaz or nunez i'd go diaz actually i do think diaz is, is a little bit ahead of nunez in the pecking order but it's not by much like obviously Gakpo is not in a great spot in terms of his position within the team 
So I prefer Diaz. Um, hey, friends, start Wood or Garnacho? I would go Wood. 28K is absolutely insane, considering where we started for the season. So thank you guys so much as well. Really appreciate it. Um, RLHPYRT, Saliba or Virgil? Um, I'd still go with Virgil. I think Virgil is a bigger goal threat. Why not take the chance here with Virgil? I also think Luton's slightly better attack too. So why not really go for the worst defense or the worst offense really in the league in, in, in Sheffield United at home? Um, start Isak or Poro? Isak for sure. Isak, captain, I'd probably not do it. Uh, Kudus or Gordon in the wild card? Um, definitely drop Kudus, so I'd go Gordon. Where am I on vacation to? I, I mean, I'm, I'm in Valencia right now in Spain. Uh, start Petrovic or Dubravka? I'd go Dubravka. Gomez or Bradley? I'd go Bradley for sure. Um, Isak, captain, I probably wouldn't be tempted by it, if I'm honest. Should I rem remove Madison or Tavernier or Elanga for Sal and Palmer? Um, I mean, if you can go out of Tavernier and Elanga, I would go that instead. I'd keep Madison, probably, because Madison's still good at double and give me 37. And Tavernier, like, that game at 34 is not good enough. Um, double, that is. Start Palmer over Madison. Yeah, 100% protagonist. I think that's that's uh, that's a no-brainer for sure. Douglas Luis to Sun for a minus four. I don't think it's worth a minus four. This isn't a great Sun fixture, and it's not worth a minus four either, um, even though this is a really bad Douglas Luis fixture. I'd rather go with someone else who's actually got a good fixture if you really want to take a minus four out of Douglas Luis. Diaby or Barnes for gross? I'd probably just keep gross. Reluctantly, I'd just, I'd just keep gross. I mean, Brentford's not a bad matchup. Uh, your mom lives 20 minutes from awesome half of the year. Cool. Does she like this? Does she uh, does she split her time in England, Spain? Is that how it is? Darwin benched. Um, what do you mean Darwin benched? We can't. There's no way we can confirm that. So, um, just gonna quickly check if we've got any news whatsoever, guys. Um, let's have a look. Nope. Still seems like we've got no news at all, which is uh. Which is what it is. Oh, Norway and Spain. Awesome. Might be personal. Uh, but what do I do for work? I'm, I, I am an accountant. Or an auditor, rather. Um, start Petrovic or Onana. I'd probably go Petrovic. Uh, Robinson or Poro. I'd probably play... Mm, I'd probably play Poro still. Why Nets over Flecken? Um, I think Flecken has a worse fixture. That's pretty much... I mean, Brighton is a much better offense than Crystal Palace, and that's pretty much it. If Neto's dropped, then I just get Flecken. Um, hi, Fran. I sold Watkins for Nunez, but who do I bench between Saka, Palmer, Foden, Son, Solanke, Tony, Nunez? I'd probably bench... I'd probably bench Foden. I think I'd bench Foden, just about. Close, though. Close, though. Talk about Isak. I mean, what is there to talk about? Lovely option. Even better for people who have a free hit 34 in their back pocket. Just a great pick on penalties. Um, can't complain. Would you bring who'd you bring in between Palmer, Foda, and Luis Diaz? Luis Diaz for sure. Just such a great fixture to bring him on. Um, minus four to bring in Holland. I mean, it depends who's going out for you. I guess it's Watkins, so maybe it's worthwhile, and you probably need a player to play. Um, Super coach says play Regulon or Zabarni. I'd probably go Regulon. Tempt myself with the attacking return. If you had Zabarni starting, start Neto or Fleck, and I would still go. I'd go Zabarni and Neto. I don't really care if I have to double up on defense. Hi, friend. If I'm forced to play Gusto or Pau this week, should I take another hit to bring a City defender? Um, you don't need to. I mean, that's what I've done. But if, if you're pretty confident that Gusto will play, which apparently he was in training today, you don't need to take that minus four. Another thing, too, is that I don't have a wild card for giving 35, right? So a lot of people are going to wild card 35 so they can actually just do something like, you know, a Liverpool move in the short term or, you know, they don't really care so much about Guardiola. But for me, Guardiola can be really useful for giving 37. So, yeah. Uh, Vladimir says... Start Muniz or Garnacho. I'd start Muniz. Um, start Garnacho with Charleston. Honestly, I'd probably still go with Charleston because I think their minutes are both a bit but dicey, but I, I kind of like Richarlison a bit more. Um, protagonist says he doesn't have Holland. Would you vice captain Saka, Son or Solanke? I'd probably vice captain Son, uh, Saka. Um, super chat from Alfred. Thank you so much. Um, got Watkins, Solanke, and Muniz. Watkins to Darwin. Watkins or Watkins plus Son for Holland. Um, so, who? Okay, let's say if you go Watkins plus Son for Holland, who's your midfielder that you're going for? You know, out of sun. That's what I want to know. I, I think I'd prefer, honestly, I'd prefer Watkins to Darwin. Just because this is such a good Darwin fixture and you never know. Um, Isak and Muniz. If, if it's not an additional minus four to go Isak, just go Isak. For me, it's an additional minus four to go Isak. So that's why I went Muniz. What is McKenzie doing? I'm confused. Have I missed something? I Nuria Bradley. Khalid says, um, I prefer Bradley. Uh, John Wick. 
High fire move, Aki to uh, Bradley, Watkins to 4.1 or Richarlison, to Salah. I, I really like those moves, John Wick, yeah. But who's the 4.1 forward, though? I'm confused in this situation. Can you, is there even a 4.1 forward in the game? Like, what, what's the, what's the deal there? Minus four for Saka from Bowen. I'd probably keep Bowen, honestly. I mean, Newcastle, awful defense, why not take that chance? Mubama, yeah, but hmm, you still get a bench boost at the end of the day, right? So I probably wouldn't go Mubama. Probably want to go the other route, which is going to be um, maybe Foden as well. But keeping Watkins, like I don't really like keeping Watkins. So if I, if you could sell Foden's and Watkins, I think that makes that. But then you have to keep Aki as well. Oh, that's tough. What if we saved a bit more money? We just can't though, can we? Because Connor Bradley's. Hmm. Really tight squeeze there. Maybe it's a minus 12. Like, I, I feel like if you think about it, by the time you bench boost, you really don't want that Muni spot, uh, that Mubama spot in place, right? So you're going to need another player to replace Mubama. That's going to be a minus four later down the line. Why not do a minus 12? I know it sounds bad, but you could probably get a better team going that would actually last you till game 37. You think Petrovic has a chance to lose his spot before the double? I mean, if he makes more howlers, yes, but I think Sanchez is so bad and he's injured as well, it's probably a pretty unlikely. Um, Protagonist says, would you take minus four for Tony to Darwin and get Holland instead of Darwin 32-33? Nah, I don't think that makes sense because you're you're doing too many hokey hokies and it's a lot of transfers in the same spot, which I don't really like intuitively. Havertz, any takers? Yeah, I think Havertz is a good is is a good fun pun. Any news on Cunha? No, it doesn't seem like we got any news about him starting, so unfortunately, no. Got no news for you. Sorry about that. No leak so far. Not that I can see, my friend. Sorry about that. Ran. Bowen or Foden? Um, you mean playing? I would, I would actually prefer Bowen, just for the Newcastle defense. You think Petrovic has a chance to lose his spot? I don't think so. As I already answered the question as well. Murphy, thank you for your super chat. Um, wild carding with three hit 34, bench boost 37, the plan. I agree, that's a great plan. Need best defenders around 5.2 for the bench boost. Dunk and Branthwaite currently on my bench, which feels bad. Yeah, but the thing is though, right? Like, well, why don't you go Van Heck? Van Heck is cheaper than Dunk. And then in terms of Branthwaite, like playing for Sheffield United at home, that's a great bench. No complaints. But the thing about Branthwaite too, I guess, is you know, if you go for your 34, like maybe you've got less reason to go Branthwaite. It's up to you, though. Have a thought about that. The alternative, I, I suppose, is a Newcastle defender, but you can't even decide who's good to go for this week because they've got so many injuries, and we don't even know, for example, whether Livermento's fit and things like that. Uh, Humza says, best two goalies to have in a wild card with no free hit. Um, honestly, I would still say Raya and Petrovic. If you can't afford Raya, then I'd, I'd probably go Pickford Petrovic. Trip your news. Apparently, he was training, but I've got no news in terms of whether he starts or not. Thoughts on triple captain Mr. Salah? I'd probably wait for Game Week 34 to triple captain Salah if you really want to do so. Salah captain or try differential. Havertz captain, 76k rank. Um, Salah captain for me. Fran is Watkins out. Watkins is confirmed out. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the minus 12 that I was thinking of, um, are you talking about from my team? I, I, would, I would be going to Luis Diaz if, if I got news that Muniz wasn't going to start or something like that. Should I captain Isak, so thank you, Holland? I prefer Holland as a differential. Why was I selling Foden? Um, just because, well, as I said, Mubama is unfortunately someone who's not going to give you any value on a bench boost on 37, right? If you don't have a bench boost, I think you can just take the minus 8, John Wick. But if you were planning to, let's say, go for a bench boost 37, you probably want to sell Foden so that you can also get a good attacker um, in the forward position as opposed to Mubama so that you can actually, you know, have an effective bench boost at least. Bradley going to start. I think Bradley's def definitely going to start. Why Guardiola over Akanji? Um, cheaper and more bonus points. And just really like Guardiola. I think he's going to play most of these fixtures going forwards. Maybe get benched one time. He also got technically a rest because of the injury. Um, so yeah, no Muniz news, unfortunately. No Muniz news. I don't have any news on him.
start Gusto over Kirkus. I would I would do that, yeah. I think it's worth it. Trip your start. I really can't confirm that, my friend. Solanke or Isak. Depends whether you're free at 34 or not. If you don't have a free hit, then I would just go uh, Solanke. Uh, why is Neto first on bench? Because it doesn't matter, does it? Um, good luck this week to you as well, Andre. Two minutes left, guys. Lock in your moves, please. Um, you've still got a free hit. When should you use it? 34, I think, is really good, Martin. Why did I keep Neto? It's not like I chose to keep Neto. It's just that I don't have any planned moves for him for this week. Um, start Gusto or Robinson. Saka bench. That's not news. That's not news, guys. Saka was training today, actually. Uh, bench Foden, Solanke or Muniz. Um, I'd probably bench Muniz. There's no Muniz news that I can see. Start Kelleher or Petrovic. Um, I'd start Kelleher for sure. Darwin captain, if you really want to, but I, I still prefer Salah. First on the bench, Garnacho or Zabarni. Garnacho, I'd say, play Poro or Zabarni, I'd play Poro. Darwin captain or Holland, I'd go Holland if you really want a differential. Uh, Bradley or Gabriel? Um, Bradley, for me. I mean, well, I mean, Gabriel still feels like a better transfer, but Bradley for this week is better, I would say. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. You've only got a few seconds left to make your transfer, so so go for it. Around 15 seconds left. Dalkey to Aitneri for a minus 8. I don't think that's worth a minus 8. Kirk is the rest of beyond. Um, I'd play S2, probably. Dalkey to Aitneri for a hit. Nah, I don't think it's worth it. Bradley or Gabriel? I'd go Gabriel. I would go Gabriel. And that's pretty much it, guys, for this week. Hands down. Hands down. Okay. Games updating soon. Unfortunately, as I said, I'm on vacation, so I will be leaving soon for dinner. Um, hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead. Hope to make some more videos. Uh, transfer plans will actually probably be coming tomorrow morning, just because the timeline is so short. We've got transfer plans, uh, cheat sheet, and then... No, I, I'm playing FPL Challenge this week. I am playing FPL Challenge. Um, I'll probably post my team on Twitter in a moment. But keep in mind, of course, FPL Challenge, the deadline technically is an hour later, right? So... Um, yeah, I'll post my FPL challenge team in a moment. And yeah, take care, guys. Hope you guys have a lovely time. I'll see you guys um, very, very soon. If you guys have any sort of um, ideas as well in terms of the cheat sheet, let me know. If you guys have any picks that you sort of are, are looking towards in the short term. But yeah, hope, hope you guys have a great time. Take care and goodbye. See you guys.